So the dominant myth we're going to be talking about today is that old one that if your dog jumps up on the bed or the sofa, it's trying to assert its dominance over you. Um, it's not. Um, it's sitting up there for the same reason that you sit up there. It's the comfiest place in the bloody room. Um, and just like any normal living thing, dogs like to be comfy. Um, it's a man-made term anyway, you know, it's just essentially a soft spot. It's a, it's a place that's comfier than that hard ground. We branded it a bed. Uh, we generally only sleep in one bed, maybe not, but uh, so we generally only give our dogs one bed, but really, you know, we have sofas and we have day beds and we have lounges and, you know, we have plenty of places that we uh, consider to be places of comfort and rest, but because we've got human terms on it, and we branded the one for our dog, the dog bed, we generally only give them one. And that's apparently the only spot that some believe that they should be allowed, which is again, horseshit. Um, now, if your dog jumps up on the bed or the sofa, like I say, it's a common sense thing. Your dog likes it up there. Um, and then it's up to you whether you want your dog up there or not. Um, some people don't like it for a number of reasons. You know, maybe they just like their own space, perfectly entitled to feel that way. Uh, maybe they don't like dog hair on the sofa. Maybe they don't like the smell. Um, maybe they don't like it because when their guests come around, uh, they want their guests to be able to use the sofa. All of them are really valid reasons. Um, it's absolutely fine. Personally, my, I don't give a shit about dog hair. So my dog's allowed on the sofa pretty much whenever he wants. Um, but I've got a really good relationship in the sense that I can send him to his bed if I feel that uh, that's where I'd rather be in that moment. Um, say for example, when I've got guests over and they don't want dogs on them or on the sofa. Or say it's a really hot day and I'm cooking and don't want somebody laying on top of me, on your bed mate. Um, but the key to that is I've taught him what I would like instead, rather than just telling him what not to do. So people put a lot of emphasis on what they don't want the dog to do. So get down, stop it, pack it in. Um, dogs confuse as all hell and we'll probably just try and get back on the comfy spot because of what it knows, the sofa. So um, if you don't want your dog on the bed, teach it where you'd rather it be. Um, every time it goes over there, like say, good, thanks, good boy, good girl, whatever, acknowledge it though. Um, because you can imagine like if the dog's just walking around the living room and getting no attention, no attention, no attention, goes over to the comfy spot and all of a sudden we're like, ah, ah, it's still attention. It's it's gonna get more, it's gonna learn. It gets more of a rise out of you for going on the sofa than it did just being anywhere else. So it might be just an attention seeking re reason uh, why the dog's on the bed. But yeah, if you want your dog on the bed, like, like I say, reward it for being on there. Um, tidy up its toys and its chews and back onto that bed so that when it's ambling around, it finds something positive there and builds positive associations of being there. And make sure it's comfy. You know, if your dog is a little sleep hound, like loves just bedding in for the night, make sure it's somewhere, something that it really wants to rest on and put it somewhere that it is going to be able to rest. Um, you know, uh, if your dog likes to keep an eye on things, maybe, maybe as long as it's not <laughs> endlessly, relentlessly following you around and causing sleep deprivation. But if that's the case, put a bed somewhere nearby so that you can see what's going on. So it's gonna to gravitate to the comfy spot while it can still see. If your dog is a bit of a recluse, and that's also, mine is, don't worry, that's normal. But put it in a place where the dog can retreat away from the world. Um, listen to what your dog likes, listen to what your dog finds comfortable. It does it like a hood over the bed, you know, does it want to be able to see? There's just make it really good for your dog. The key to it is your dog wanting to be there, not your dog learning that you want it to be there. Big difference. Um, it does become a problem, dogs being on beds and sofas, when there's resource guarding involved. Um, don't forget, if you're the one that's like, get down, get off, get off, get off, you're, you're resource guarding, so apparently that's not a problem, but when, when the dog is resource guarding, um, that normally involves aggression, so growling and snapping to create space between you and it because it wanted its space. Um, 
when it comes on to this, I'm not going to go into the whole dominance theory on this ship uh, because we've put a whole video on that, on situational dominance. But uh, it is really important uh, to get professional help if this is the case because there is not trying to influence your emotions. It does, doesn't have that cognitive ability. Remember, it has the cognitive ability of an 18-month-old baby. Um, so there is an underlying issue there. It's probably sleep um, stressed out is potentially uh, sleep deprived and there is a breakdown in communication. So you need some professional help in ascertaining why this behavior is happening in the first place. Uh, don't use physical force, you will make it worse. Um, and don't get in a battle of wills with something that's got the cognitive ability of an 18 month old child because it doesn't even know it's in one. Um, on that note guys, as long as the relationship is healthy and you can communicate what you want, when you want, and you're listening to your dog, and you're providing for your dog's needs, who gives a shit if your dog's on the sofa or not. Have a good day.